Hi all, welcome to Show Studio's Reese series. I'm Georgina Evans, fashion editor at Show Studio. Thrilled to be joined with Priya Fazane. Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I'm dragging you back because I know you're in full spring summer mode at the moment, but I'm dragging you back to autumn into 19. Um, been a bit of an amazing 2018 for you. I feel like I've been seeing the Priya print everywhere. It's celebrities, Instagram, shoes, Converse, everything is kind of blowing up. It's been amazing, but the Autumn Winter 19 collection was just this cherry on the, on the cake for me. Um, it was a huge moment for the season. So the show itself, amazing set, amazing casting, um, but super immersive um, elements to it as well. I want to talk to you a little bit about where that started. Did the collection come first and then providing this narrative around the collection? Or I know you've designed with characters in mind before. What kind of came first? What was your starting point for this? I think um, definitely with Autumn Winter 19, it was the past six months in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I think what people just kind of lose when they're designing is the fact that we're going to focus on fish or we're going to focus on red. Um, for me, it's more about the next chapter and how I can tell that story. And I guess this was chapter three of, of what's what was going on then and I feel like the story isn't always going to be the same thing because that's just life and this is the the practice that I'm showing it through mm. so in terms of what came first I mean I'm very an erratic person so I can't even begin to like <laughs> put this in stages. I mean, of course, you have initial idea when you're pattern cutting and you have silhouettes in mind and things that you want to make. But for me, um, first and foremost, was being able to transport people into a completely different place. Mm. And let's talk about that place because what a place it was. Oh. <laughs> um, so the whole kind of, uh, the whole space was, um, it was in like the, the area of like a club under some railways in London so already getting a little bit of like a dystopic vibe and then you go in um, and it's all dark and moody and the catwalk well catwalk starts with a, that a, alarm bell, bell that oh, phone God. alarm yeah. that, every, get it <laughs> um, that everyone kind of <laughs> hears when you wake up in the morning it's that super annoying drill um, and then the model kind of gets out of bed um, opens the door and enters onto this conveyor belt and the whole time the phone is kind of really key um, and the models are taking pictures of themselves and they enter this kind of plastic chamber at the end of the runway where they stand and kind of think about their behaviour <laughs> and I should also add that the invite was a plastic bag am I right mm. in saying that? Mm. I've told to hide our phones and just enjoy the show but as soon as the model gets out their phone I can see people around me getting out their phones as well and it kind of feeds into this whole you, the basic, basically what I found so fantastic was it was point in case we're supposed to be hiding our phones because you're making a point about how um, we're all glued to our phones and our phones are an extension of our hands almost post-human um, and everyone in the audience kind of proved you exactly right by ignoring the instruction on the invite and whipping their phones out and taking videos um, so an amazing narrative amazing story um, and a huge message as well um, but tell me tell me a little about it from your vantage point and what you were trying to portray um, well I think that that <laughs> In 2019, the most, well, definitely the biggest problem, I think, is, is human connection. Um, I've been really, really homing in on the fact that people have this stigma of being scared to speak to one another or they will not approach someone because they have a device or a screen that they can play a part of their life where they wouldn't in in reality and i know that people catch themselves saying oh you know in real life we can do this and i mean there you go that's the yeah. justification that you know that the the mobile phone is is a tool and that's not real life and it should be used as something that you're taking to give um, some direction or oh, I'm going to use this phone so I can find you so I can be here with you yeah um, it's just the irony I mean I, I knew as soon as the first model came out and was videoing themselves as people do when they wake up like what do you do when you wake up I don't because I've put this away from my life 
<laughs> but I can put so much money on the routine of people waking up, their alarm, the, the scroll through Instagram, and it's, it's unnecessary, but it's been embedded into everybody's routine that it's so hard to get out of. And I think this was a really important time to be able to, you know, articulate it in a way that everybody would be listening. And yes, I wanted people to feel uncomfortable. And of course, when you're going to hear that alarm, it's 6 a.m. And oh, my God, I don't want to wake up and I don't <laughs> want to do life or adult today. But mm -hmm. you do. And when you have that phone and a part of it, I think it's just kind of like, okay, can you just check yourself because we're doing this and nobody's looking around them. They're just focused in this vortex. <laughs> vortex world of phone. Um, tell me a little bit about the space at the end, this kind of chamber, because I like to think of it as like a self-reflection. It was almost like you've <laughs> done the day. Yeah. Um, but there's been lots of different theories about what, what it means and kind of dystopian sci-fi future or literally just kind of from the outside looking in, but I'm interested to hear your perspective. I mean, idea. like you said, I think you hit the nail on the head of, of one of the aspects I really wanted to explore with this dystopian self-reflection now that you've done this throughout the day and you've, you've wasted time. Like, I'm sure that people now don't have the time to daydream. We don't have the time to be bored because mm. you can have instant entertainment. Gratification. And yeah, and I guess that's, that's so important for a human being to be able to lose themselves or to daydream and to be bored. But you can't do that anymore because there's something else. And yes, self-reflection at the same time, I just think that's, that's my reality. Um, always being in this in this box and especially in, in an industry where things are thought to be a certain way and people are prejudiced because they kind of expect a certain thing to happen mm. I think the best things that that work and are successful and that people can relate with are the things that are unexpected because people have a fear of the unknown yeah and sometimes it can be something where you know, it shocks you and sometimes it can be really dark and sometimes it can be upsetting. But at the same time, it's something that you can actually reflect on and, and make a change in your life to live your life differently. Learn from. So I guess there, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really down to uh, p perception and that, that's, that's why we, we do this. It's because it's for anybody and however they want to take it. Mm. But that was the original idea, I guess. Yeah, I love it. It was just, it was so thought provoking, but also just fed into the whole narrative is, because this in itself is Instagram fodder as well, which I love. It's, oh just, God, like a, it's I just, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I also thought the makeup as well, this kind of almost American Patrick psycho. Yes. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Psycho slicked hair and living in this monotonous, re repetitive. Yeah, and that, that's that's what I like. Like, you know, when I'm designing collections or coming up to the show, like I'm not really going to a gallery or whatever. Like, I'm either watching like David Lynch to like Paul Thomas Anderson and films like Magnolia and The Master because those kinds of films kind of transport me into a place where that's not the reality, but for an hour and a half it is. Mm. And for 10 minutes, that was the reality. Yeah. And for somebody to feel a way, then that's me doing my job right, because it's, it's so beyond fashion. It's yeah. so beyond fashion. But actually taking it back to fashion, while, <laughs> while taking it back to fashion, the actual fashion I don't think was um, like dystopic or dark. I actually think no. it was super smart, super, super slick. And I loved the fact that the print's been taken into piping and that's really, I'm going to have a look at some of the stuff up close actually. This was my absolute favourite look. Oh, the was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. this crossover I think is, I haven't seen this massive crossover from you. That was me faffing around at probably <laughs> 1 a.m. and I had this toile. It was originally going to be long and then I cut it and then I wrapped it round really tight because I'm very small and 
on a man it's it's different the the, the proportions are really different and then um, that's what we came up with that it kind of masks as like some kind of kimono type because inside it ties and ends in an elastic and here it ties here with the button in, in the chest there's a, a zip compartment which makes it formal but still you know accessible and you can wear it day to day rather than having to wear a tracksuit and be very informal and not really saying anything <laughs> but that's what i like about this collection because i felt like it was a step towards slightly more smarter but also incredibly beautiful but also then you've got the practicality element mm -hmm. like you're saying this is waterproof but actually the shape of it's kind of formal to me absolutely and then you have the practicality of the pockets and also these bags sent everyone into absolute mayhem oh. everyone was so excited about them um, i'm a really big fan of plastic anything mm. so but these were all covered in plastic kind of sheen weren't they these beautiful messenger bags crossing the body they remind me a little bit of plastic sofas i hope you don't take offense to that. that is absolutely <laughs> the inspiration <laughs> <laughs> so with the bags as well, like again with the Iranian fabric, I can like, you know, resonate again to 1997 or 8 being at my grandmother's house. And I think I've mentioned it. I did this other video with you guys and um, that tablecloth will stay on the table and there's vinyl on top. Oh, perfect. So grandma can wipe clean. Got it. And yeah. So this is the kind of practical... And so here it is in, in a bag formation. Like you said, it's, it's practical and it's like, there's something about plastic. And I know I completely, it's like taking something and preserving it, but you can still see exactly what's going on underneath. And I think that's really special. You've done a best in show with, with us before, but, mm. and I was watching that the other day. Um, and you're saying that some of the prints were kind of block printed in really traditional styles. Star yeah. Are you still doing that with the prints? Every single print is hand printed um, in a city called Esfahan in Iran, where the cotton is made especially, and then they are um, wood block printed, starting with the black outline first, and then they will build every single colour individually, um, which in itself is an absolute insane art and <laughs> such a dry, uh, dying trade because you don't really get anything that's done by hand to that. I mean, it's, it's not perfection and you can see imperfections in the print, really, really small ones, but I think that's what makes it special because every single one is, is different in its own way. Mm. Well, I love that as well, the merging of traditions with these like really modern shapes as well. Yeah. That to me is really special. We're talking about modern elements. You've still got the Converse um, collaboration, which is really great. And it's literally, they're almost unobtainable at this point. <laughs> they're so popular. Yes, um, they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also knits. We have to talk about the knits. Tell me a bit about the print and the colour choices, because also the colours in this collection were slightly new for you, I think. The colours were actually chosen by um, a very weird trip to Columbia Road and <laughs> I kind of left my, my head a little because when I see flowers I kind of just get a little bit lost because there's so much you can take from them and um, again being an uh, erratic person I just took and made up this crazy bouquet that looked like it was so random it was so random and that's, that's why all the colours are there, because it was from that bouquet and that's what we worked from. Sometimes when people ask you, so why have you done that? And I'm just like, that's how I felt, so here it is. <laughs> but and it's your brand, that. that's, that's exactly. your prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> and last, to close the show, a women's wear look. Tell me about it. That was going to be me in the show. Oh really? But okay. we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do it. For a lot of reasons, and I think she, she worked really well, she was, she was super strong. Um, and I, I think if you remember um, towards the end when she was on the conveyor belt, there was a break in the Radiohead song, um, Exit for a film. Um, and Radiohead, like, I can't even begin to talk about Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so having that closing moment and I remember she was getting to the plastic box. However, there was no entry. Mm. And, you know, that was to, to simplify, that was to simplify me and it doesn't matter how high or how low or wherever you are in, in this ladder of success, I'm going to use this, <laughs> um, it will always be 
a struggle and I felt like that was me not being able to, to ever get through into a world dominated by, by men. Mm. You know, when, when she finally took her hands away and the red light was on, um, she turned around and walked the opposite direction and all of the other models followed. We can see there, you definitely had to be there to, to understand, but um, this, this was just... Symbolic. Yeah, this was just how, how I felt. And when you constantly feel like you are drowning, which can be the case sometimes mm. when, you, when you're doing something so intense, um, this, is, this was the output. So here is Karis and... Yeah, she, she led them all away. And it's nice, <laughs> I like that symbolism. And it's nice to have a slightly emotive element when yeah. the whole show has been like quite red light intense. Absolutely. Um, so it's nice, it was a good way to end, I think. Um, before we end, next season, I'm excited. The bar has been set. Can you sneaky peeky anything or lips are officially sealed? Well, um, lips are sealed, but like you said, the bar is set and, <laughs> oh God, no. Um, I think things will be very different in June, um, purely because, yeah, again, the past six months have been such a, a roller coaster and in June you'll be able to fully see what, what, went, what went on and how this, how this collection and that season has completely impacted my life and, and, and the direction that I'm going. And um, hopefully people will be able to understand. Okay. Okay, well, I, I can't <laughs> In wait. a dark way. In God, a dark way. So no, it was good. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I absolutely can't wait. Interest officially peaked. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming You're in and chatting to me. You're very welcome. It was such a joy. Thank you.